Well, joining me now is uh, the former UKIP leader, Lord Pearson. Um, Lord Pearson, is UKIP still a thing? It's a, it's a thing which is yeah, undergoing a, a bit of what they call lively infighting, I think, yeah. Because yeah, yesterday, um, the unfortunately named Dick Brain actually resigned as leader, is that Oh, right? I didn't know that. You I'm didn't as know out that. of touch as that. No, I didn't know. <laughs> but I, I beat him to it. <laughs> you beat him. I mean, are you still part of UKIP? No, no, I'm UKIP? not. I, I'm sitting now as a, an independent peer in, in, in the Lords. And what future do you see for UKIP, given that we've got Nigel Farage uh, ploughing his own furrow with the Brexit party? Yes, well, I, I think it's quite helpful to have UKIP out of the cheese as we go into this general election, where the, the, the big dilemma, obviously, is, is, is how is Nigel and the Brexit party going to behave? Are, the, are they going to collaborate with the Conservatives and all the rest of it? That's a big question. So it's good to have UKIP out of that one, really. And, um, but I think there is a chance that the, the members and the branches will take over UKIP again um, after Brexit. And it could then become a useful instrument um, for doing actually what I want to do um, beyond Brexit, after Brexit, which is to encourage and join a, a national debate about Islam, really, which is the next big one, but it's too early to talk about it now, really. Well, yes, and, and it, it did get uh, UKIP into trouble uh, yes. in, re in recent campaigns because yes. they've yes. been seen as being Islamophobic. Exactly. Well, I, I don't know if you want to talk about Islamophobia, but it's a very stupid word <laughs> because it cannot be phobic or unreasonable uh, to fear radical Islam. Um, and, but that's... But you see, know, that's the problem, isn't it? The moment you start talking about aspects of Islamism, radical Islam, the fear is if you also talk about the problem of Islam, you're brandishing all aspects, you're branding all aspects of Islam. But that, that's why I want to talk about it. You know, I, I'm not a, a great expert on Islam, although I've been studying it for seven years. And I, I think it would be helpful to know and to get on the side of our Muslim friends, and the vast majority of, of Muslims are peace-loving and all the rest of it, and how do we help them um, to stand up to their radical co-religionists and, and actually produce a, a new form of Islam in this country, which is um, the, the mild form of Islam, the Islam of, of Mecca, if you like, and, and not the Islam of Medina when Muhammad became a violent warlord. And it's a huge debate, and it's too early to have it. And but I wanted, I wanted I, the reason I sort of associated with Tommy, Tommy Robinson, was that I thought he could help me with this debate. But I, and I, because I believe that actually the country was well, going to... Do you still think that? I mean, the suggestion is there's an awful lot of, um, you know, underlying racism, frankly, in the stance. No, racism... Like the forgive me, Anne, but racism is a very silly word to apply to Islam. Because Islam is pretty well every race on the planet. And um, all, all I want to do is to start talking about it. I well, mean, if I have you, for instance, and you're a great pundit, can you tell me what abrogation is? No. Well, uh, you see, that, that's a very, very important answer. And we'll come back well, to it. Well, do tell me what it is. Well, what it means is it's the Muslim tenet whereby the later verses of the Quran, the verses after Muhammad moved... Um, to Medina, the verses of the sword, the violent verses, outweigh and cancel the earlier verses, the earlier verses mm. of peace. Now, if that is so, I don't know, but I think we should yeah. talk about it, then Islam cannot be a religion of peace. But uh, the fact remains that if you're saying things like Islam cannot be a religion of peace... I didn't say that. I said if well, abrogation holds, yeah. then we've got to talk about it. But that is basically, potentially putting everybody who follows that faith into a box and, and whether, you call no, it, it whether you call it racist it's or not. It's asking them to separate. It's asking them to define themselves uh, according, you know, so that they can live with our Western, in our Western yeah, democracy, our Western system. you can find things in the Old Testament which are extremely, well, it, it, extremely uh, bloodthirsty and blood it, it was, but not the New Testament. And you wouldn't go around challenging Christians yeah, but orth orthodox, to whether they're Old Testament or Orthodox or, Jews, or New, or New Testament orthodox Jews are not murdering tens of thousands of innocent people on the strength of Leviticus and the Old Testament. They're not. And, 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 the, and when you talk about the Bible, the New Testament mm. is entirely peaceful and, and, and good. But do you think this is really... I mean, you've mentioned your, your sympathy to, with, with Tommy Robinson. I mean, do you really think this is the sort of thing we want to intrude onto the political agenda? 
Um, yes, I do, but not now. Because many people feel threatened by it. I know, I know, and I... Maybe what I've just said will be regarded as Islamophobic, but it isn't. Uh, it's not an unreasonable fear. It's just a thirst for knowledge, to know what this thing is. After all, don't forget that the Muslim birth rate in this country is going up ten times faster than ours. I've got a government written answer. Well, there's them and us already. Well, uh, yeah, but you see, what ha they are... Oh, are they? I don't know. Does the Quran and, and, and the, the, their faith instruct them not to mix with Jews and Christians and all the rest of it? Those who advise me, and I've got a lot of expert Muslim advisors, do say that, that they are actually instructed not to mingle with us. Mm. So what happens when in 12 years' time, no. 11 local authorities, um, including Birmingham, will be Muslim majority. But my question is whether this is, is a constructive discourse at all in politics, given that whether we're Muslims, Jewish, atheists or whatever, you know, we're talking about British citizens here, we all have a vote. People's religion, surely, is a personal thing. Yes, but I, 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 you still got to look at the, at the... I mean, after all, one of the world's leading Muslims said to a friend of mine the other day, you know, we, we really don't need to go on blowing you up. Um, all we need is, is to wait. Uh, because we will take over your culture through the power of the womb and the ballot box. And that does bring politics into it. And all I want to do is talk about it. And, uh, I'm, you know, and a lot of people agree with me and a lot of people don't. But, you know, I'm quite used to that. And as far as the Brexit party goes, those sort of views would disqualify you, wouldn't you? I, I, I would think and the Conservative Party, yes. yes. Yeah. So that's why I'm an independent. I'm sitting as an independent. Independent. OK, thank you very much indeed, Lord Pearson. Not at all. Very great honour. <laughs>